Célébrer. Élevons nos voix ce matin pour ce Célébrons Élevons nos voix pour le Seigneur. Glory be to the Lord. Honor the name of the Lord. Precious God. God is so good. Lamb of God. God is awesome. Worthy, worthy. Receive the glory, the praise. This faithful God. Hallelujah. His love. His life. Glory be Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. It's your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your presence in our midst this morning. Lord Jesus, we bless your name this morning. Draw us close to you again. Our weakness is we come to you, Lord. Because you are our strength. You are the one who fills us up because we are empty. And with you, we can do great things. We give glory to God this morning. Thank you for this wonderful time, this wonderful hour in his presence. Lord, as your children gather this morning again in your presence, we pray that you speak to us. 
again ourselves unto you, Father. Yell ourselves unto the Holy Spirit this morning. To prepare our heart. To hear your voice. To hear your message. To hear your talk. Through the Holy Spirit, the canon of communication. Lord, have your way this morning in our midst. We thank you, Holy Ghost, for helping us. We can't make it without you, Holy Ghost. He said the prayer this morning, the Mariam powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can be seated. I welcome you again this morning, sorry. I welcome you in your house, in your car, wherever you are now. All together in Christ. We are celebrating this service together. As we are one, led by the same spirit, the spirit of our Father. No matter where you are now, as we join together, we are all before the throne of grace and the throne of mercy. Our Father, going to talk to our heart this morning again. Talking to his people, to his children, we are, you and I. This morning, we are going to exhort ourselves, encourage ourselves, be reinforced by the Holy Spirit. The message of this morning, I'm just going to say, transforming life through Christ by the Holy Spirit. Transforming life through Christ by the Holy Spirit. Or the new life in the Christ. I just want to talk about life with the children of God. We have to live. Let's read the word of God in the book of First Peter, chapter 4. First Peter, chapter 4. I read. For as much then as Christ has so far for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has so far in the flesh as he is from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh, the loss of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life, it suffices us to have 
brought the will of the Gentile. When we walk in lastivalness, lost test of wine, revealing, bankering, and abominable idolatry. I'm not going to stop there. Hallelujah. This short passage is talking about you talking about me. And referring to the Lord Jesus, our master. He said to be like him. Because Lord Jesus has suffered in the flesh for you and an I. It's the passage that encourages encourage us to have the same mind. Because Christian life is a sacrifice. He said to be strong. Because we'll have to face the challenges of the flesh. The desire of the flesh. The loss of flesh. By it's reminding us that our Lord Jesus, He has conquered, He has defeated, He has overcome for us the loss of flesh. And He said, For the time that we resist, also of flesh, the desire of the flesh, then we cease from sin. That we should no long, longer live like the Gentile live, the pagan live. We should no longer live like people who don't have Christ live, but we should live and do the will of God. Because he that resists in the flesh, he resists the flesh, he resists and he defeats, he overcomes sin. So we should no longer live like we used to live before. Because it's the Bible, the word said here in the past, we've been living according to our desire. We've been living according to this word. We've been living in a bombing of idolatry. We've been living like a strangers for the time. We've been living like people who don't have light. There are people who are living in the darkness. But at the time that we give our life to the Master, to the Lord, we should know that our past life has been overcome. And we are no creature now in Christ. Talking here about the new life a Christian is supposed to live. You and I, if you want to go and make a list of what we shouldn't do and why we shouldn't do. I don't think a year will be enough for us to make a list. Because thing we think sometimes that it's right, 
is the same the sight of God. Think sometimes we think that it's an excuse. The same the sight of God. So how should I live? Knowing and believing that I'm doing the will of my father. Because a new life in Christ and transforming life in Christ is to do the will of God. It's all about doing the will of God. When we give our life to the Lord Jesus, we are no longer who we used to be. What the Bible say, that all things have passed and all things have become new. We become a new person, no personality, no identity. The Bible says we are the lights of the world. We are the salt of the world. How can I, can, can I live? How can I think? My mind. What am I nourishing in my mind? What do I desire? What do I say? How can I please God? For somebody like you and I here. His name is Nicodemus. You went through the same equation. But no love said, don't do this. Do not fornicate. Do not lie. Do not commit idolatry. Adultery. Don't do this, don't do that. I finish up this, I finish with this. Unless you live the new life, you'll still be struggling with the sin. Unless you change. Unless something come and convince you. We are going to take the example of Nicodemus in the book letter. In the John, first, uh, John 3, Gospel according to John 3. We are going to read it quickly. John 3 from verse 1. John 3. There was a man or the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jew. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, you know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this miracle that thou do, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Hallelujah. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except the man, the man is born again, he can do the will of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Is an answer. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, of the, of, the, of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Except a man was born with water and of the spirit. Amen. And what Jesus say? Jesus say in John 7, let me read it to you quickly. John 7. John 7, verse 37. You can write it down. John 7, verse 20. Just write it down. Jesus said, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and, and cried, saying, If any man test, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believe of me, as the scripture said, out of him shall flow rivers of life. Hallelujah. 
out of him shall flow the reserve of the day. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus yet, except the man give his life to the Lord Jesus. Except the man believe on me. And of the spirits, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The new life, you hear me? Not only receiving Christ, but also receiving the spirit of God to walk in you. Reason why Christ Jesus himself, he told to the disciple, he said, you wait, I'm going to the Father, but you wait until I send you the Holy Spirit who will come and explain to you and help you to understand what I'm teaching you. You're going to receive a power from heaven. And if that power, that you're going to go and be my witness. A new life in a crime is in being a witness of the Lord. But you cannot be a witness of the God when the power promised by Jesus doesn't come and walk with you. Your new life is a living with Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come and help you out. The Bible says in Romans 8, 26, he says, the Holy Spirit helped our infirmity because and intercede for us. Sometimes we ask, we don't know even what to ask. What can you ask? You cannot know, live a new life by your own. Otherwise, you will be struggling. When they say this, you say, no, I'm done with this. I don't, I don't fornicate. I don't lie. No, I don't go to, I don't commit idolatry. I don't do this. Before you finish this, the other one jump again and come. You say, I think I'm, I'm finished. I deal with it already. But he come back again. You are struggling by yourself. You are struggling. You need the Holy Spirit. A new life is a life with the Spirit of God. A new life is the life that submits himself to the Spirit of God. Maybe somebody going to tell me, how oh, can I have the Spirit of the Holy Spirit? How can I have it? The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Or you ask amiss. You don't know how to ask. Everybody can have the Holy Spirit because it's a promise of Jesus. He said himself. In Acts, Acts 1, verse 8, what he say? Act 1. What act one, what God say? He say, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall be what witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all the Judah and the Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. You shall receive what? Power. That the Holy Spirit will come upon you. This is why we will see that the church on the earth come to be manifest. The church come to be manifest. The church come to be active. When on the day of the Pentecost, that power promised by the Lord Jesus come upon the disciple, come upon his people. He's the one who say, he said, you shall receive the power for you then to be my witnesses. Being the witness of Jesus, being the witness of God, is a need to live a new life. That God agreed, that God approved. The transformed life, not the struggling life. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, that power, everything will be smooth for you. But if you don't receive it, because you don't ask it, 
what the Bible said. God said, "Was so wicked you are. You know how to give good things to your children. I have not my your father, your heaven father, can give, cannot give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. We need the Holy Spirit for the new life in Christ. To the transformed life, we need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will come and help you. In the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 1. In the 29 verse 1, Jeremiah, the Bible says, God said, I know the thought I have for you. It's a thought of peace. To give you peace and not evil. God is not going to give you evil. He will give you what will make you to be in peace. Hallelujah. Last Thursday, we hear the word of God. Last Thursday online. He said, having the peace of Christ. You have the peace of Christ. That means what? You are not living in a sin. Your heart, your spirit, your soul will be in a peace. Hallelujah. We need that peace. God said that's what I promised for you. And to extend it to the end, we need to be in peace. The Holy Spirit will give you peace. The Holy Spirit will connect you to the God, to God. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you what is the thought of God. God said, I have a thought for you. Do you know the thought of God for you? The Holy Spirit can reveal it to you. He will reveal to you so you know how to live. He will reveal to you so you can have a discernment. He will convince you. You can do that. You shouldn't do that. You can do this. You shouldn't do this. The Holy Spirit is going to convince you. You don't have it. You can't please God. It's a connector. It's the bridge. It's the communicator. He's the one who put us in a relation with God. You know, without the Holy Spirit, we are far from God. And we are close to the world. Because the Holy Spirit will communicate to you our thoughts. You won't going to believe in confusion. You may be a good person, a generous person, but you may not be doing the will of God. You may not live in the thought of God because you don't have the connector. You don't have the relation. And Jesus himself is saying that you need it. You say, yes, we got it. I know the thought of God for me. God want to bless me. How do you want me to prosper? He wants to bless you how? Today you are a, I'm a preacher. Tomorrow I'm an evangelist. After one year, I'm a prophet. After I'm a bishop, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. God may not reveal it to you. You just jump in from time to time. In your education, you need the Holy Spirit to help you out. What kind of career I want for tomorrow? I need the Holy Spirit to help me. You may say man, it's not a new life, but God will lead you to the job that will please God for you. Hallelujah. You don't have it. You'll be struggling. When we talk about forgiveness, we hear the preaching last time here about forgiveness. That's the one point that we Christians, we struggle with. We can forgive. But when you read the book of, uh, you go to uh, the book of Matthew, verse 26, going down. You know, this is when his hours was coming to be betrayed. He was with his disciple. And he brought, point, he brought out a point. That the hour is coming and they're all going to deny that they never know him. They're going to abandon him. They say, no. You know, Jesus, you know everything. He said, no. Judas said, no, it's not me, right? 
Jesus, do that. God, Jesus said, you say it. Peter said, you know, you know, it's not me because I love you. I can be trained. And the Lord said, you know, before the crowd, the call crowd try, you will deny me. You will deny me. All the disciples, when the time came, they all say, I don't know you. Even Peter was so close to him. When the time came, they even recognized Peter by the way he lived, the way he speak. But Peter said, uh-uh. I never knew him. Jesus knows their thought. He already knew them. He knows their thought. He knows everything. But look, when Jesus was raised from death, When he was left from there, for people who deny him, people who betray him, people who lie, like a Peter, the liar, the deceiver, people who've been with Jesus, he can come like you. People close to you, they may disappoint you. But last time we hear the preaching here, say some people say you cannot do that to me, and sometimes we say it's not you who can offend you. Can do that to me, like we say sometimes. You do that to me, you don't know me. You don't know who I am. We struggle with forgiveness. But when Jesus was raised from death, the when Mary and, Ma Mary and Mara went to the grave, and they saw the resurrected man, what he said? When he lived, read it, let's read it in Matthew 28 10, quickly. I want to read Matthew 28 10. Yeah. All those who betray him, who forsake him, they say, He said, Then Jesus said unto them, Hallelujah, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Go tell who? My brethren. Those who forsake him. He called them my brethren. The one who hurt you. That's the point of forgiveness. We can't do that anymore. The day my husband disappoint me, I don't call him honey, honey anymore. The day my wife disappoint me, I'm not happy. She's not sweet her anymore. I mad at him. My best friend, you can't do that to me. Jesus, he called them my brethren. Why? He, he won't just want to show us forgiveness. The Holy Spirit will take you to the will of God. You know what he says? Before, when you were on the cross, people were mocking him. Everybody can mock, everybody can mock him. The priests, the Roman soldiers, even people, women who are passing by, coming from farm and passing by, everybody can stand and mock him and laugh to him. He said, if you save people, can't you save yourself now? You save people. That's the time now to show the power, your power. Save yourself now. Now that you are arrested, now that you are crucified. It doesn't mean Jesus cannot do it. He can save himself. He has the power to do it. Because he conquered death, but he's not going to do their will. He has to do the will of his father. The will of his father, he already said himself. Because before he go on the cross, he even talked to his dad. He talked to his father. He said, if you can take away this cup of me, if you can take away this cup, because his heart was filled of sorrow. He see what he's going through. What he's going to go through, he see, if father, you can take this cup away from me, so I may not drink it, but your will be done. That's what he's teaching us. May the will of God be done. I know I can lie. I know I can do this. I know I have excuse to do this, but may the will of my father be done. That's the word of the Holy Spirit. And you see the disciples. 
the liars. They all deny him. Jesus know that something will lack because they don't have something yet. Peter doesn't have something yet. Andrew, all of them, they don't have something yet. So at this end, he did not, he did not blame them. Hallelujah. He did not blame them. The Holy Spirit was not there yet. This is why he told them, you wait until the power will come. And when the power will come, you will be my true witnesses. If you don't have that power, you can't be the witness of the Lord Jesus. And the Peter, the liar, when now the Spirit, the power, the Holy Ghost come upon them now, we see what the miracle of God performed through Peter, through John, through Paul. He see what Jesus has performed, the power. They rest, death, they rest now. Death. death can come back to life. Sick can be healed. Some women can stand and walk. Because what? The power was there. They are allowed to be transformed. They can preach the kingdom to people. They can prepare. People will tell them, what should we do now? You he can tell them now, boldly, you should repent. Repentance. That's what you need. They can preach now because why? it's not them that's working anymore, but it's a Christ Jesus. Unless the, and it's a power. Unless the power is there, you know, preaching. Sermon will be for you just like uh, 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 advice. You will hear the preaching, you will read the word of God, it will be just like advice. Church will be like an uh, association when the power is not, the power of the Holy Ghost is not there. It will be like association. The commandment of God the biblical instruction will be like a burden. The authority, you will feel the authority like a domination. You will see preaching. You will feel like you are being targeting during the preaching. The word of God will be like it's targeting you. It's been appointing you. Because what? You. Holy Spirit is not there. Life is not transformed. I don't want to go through what a new life can look like. The Holy Spirit is the one who convinces of sin. The Holy Spirit is the one going to come and change you. You have it. You can have it. You don't have it. You are cheating on yourself because you don't ask. Do you pray about it? Did you pray about it? You know how Kate in the back home, we live Africa, we have Kate around. You know when they come to beg food. You know how they beg food, right? They'll be begging meow, meow, meow until you feed, you feed him. You have to ask for it. You will say, I pray, I pray, I pray, but God doesn't ask my prayer. You pray because you are not connected. If you not get you want to get married, the first comma is not necessary. The ones come from God. If you are a young man, a young woman, and a young you come to you, it doesn't mean that uh, she or he come from God. The Holy Spirit has to talk to you to convince you. First time is not always the first step need to be said. Unless you be convinced. Hallelujah. Some of, our, some, some of our marriage are not working because the Holy Spirit is not there. It's not working there. That one man can deny anything to the wife. The wife can deny anything to the, to, to, to the husband. 
and we can live anyhow. We become arrogant. Arrogant. It's me who say that. It got to be done like that. I don't like this. Who are you? You don't like this. Did you ask yourself, you don't like it now? You're doing your will. You're not doing the will of God. Jesus can save himself from the cross by saying, I'm not going to do it. I have a mission. That's a prophecy. I have to go by what the scriptures say. The scriptures say, I should go through that. Even if it's a painful, I have to go through that because it's a, it's a prophecy. That's why my father has sent me to, I got to do the work of my God. You feel painful sometimes. It may not be easy. But let me tell you, when the spirit of God is there, he free you. Free you. Your entire Christian life will be smooth. Because when people will be enjoying it, you will see like a filthiness. Why? Because the spirit of God is there helping you out. What you loved before, what you loved before, you will feel like you still desire. But the Holy Spirit will come and tell you, mm -mm, you are better than that. And it's not even going to tell you you are better than that. Don't do it. But it's going to show you good things. It's going to show you who you are. It's going to show you your place. It's going to position you. And you will convince you of who you are and you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't live like that. You shouldn't live like that. You, should, you know you convince you that in a course is for those who are in a wedlock. You are not in a wedlock. You are not allowed to have in a course. You are not allowed to have a sexual intimacy. You are not allowed to do it. Same sex, same sex intimacy, you are not allowed to do it. But if the Holy Spirit doesn't convince you, you won't be, you won't be understand it. That same sex cannot have an intimacy. Some of our Christians, we still live in idolatry. We still go to which doctor? Idolatry. We are hypocrites. Like I said, we can forgive. We hate. Like I said, the list may be too long. Exhaustive. We can't. But you need one thing. One thing we need. We need to overcome sin. Because the Bible says we can overcome it. But not you, not me, can overcome it. We don't have that strength to do it. We don't have that power to do it. But the power comes from heaven and above. It's what we call the Holy Spirit. That's the answer Jesus gave to Nicodemus. Unless you are born of the water, that will flow in you. Love will flow in you. Joy will flow in you. Understanding will flow in you. Wisdom will flow in you. Life will be just easy to you unless you are born of Christ and of the Holy Spirit. We cannot be a person of the kingdom of God. But God has called us to enjoy our life. To be free. To not live in a bondage. Sin is a bondage. Sin is a prison. But we want to be better at the prison of Christ Jesus like Paul will be. Hallelujah. To so our life, please God, to heaven rejoice of us. We may need the repentance. You may need the repentance. If you are empty, you know it. If you are empty, you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, working with you. You know it. And don't quench the Holy Spirit when it comes to be manifesting you. Don't quench it. Don't spell it the Holy Spirit. Let him move in you. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit come and walk with you to help you out. But you don't want to let the Holy Spirit walk. You still want to do your part. You are silenting it. Free yourself. Break yourself down. But the Holy Spirit convince you of sin of faith, and of righteousness. May God bless us. And may the Holy Spirit help us again. Hallelujah. We may need a new life, a repentant life. May God help us to be repentant, a new way live life, and please God. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I thank God for the word that we just heard. Ah, uh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray uh, in, uh, I think, in Matthew, probably Matthew 11. Jesus, he told people when listening uh, to the Pharisees and to the Jews, uh, the Je Jewish uh, uh, religion, that the teaching that you have is just human or man instructions. We need to know to hear from God and not from man. Hallelujah. And Christian life as an uh, elder preach is to understand that it is not your life. Sometimes we think Christian life, God is going to improve me. God is going to make me better. God is going to do so, so that I'll be able. No. Christian life is the life of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit must live the life in us. That's Christian life. Every time that uh, all the effort that we do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do to be better, to no. Christ, Christ didn't come to make us better. He came to kill us. Hallelujah. To kill us, to put us aside, and he's going to take the place. And he's going to work. That's why we need to understand. And that's why we've been preaching all this. We want people to understand that it's not us. It's not our strength. But it is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we are helpless. We can do nothing. We cannot please God. Only the Holy Spirit. So we need really to, as elders say, do we pray for the Holy Spirit to take control? Do, do, do we beg? Because until we get to the point that we can say, please God, I need your Holy Spirit. Then think will be easy. Because it's not going to be you doing it. It's going to be the Holy Spirit doing everything true. Can we really understand? Understand that we need the Holy Spirit. That we need the, the life of God to flow through us so that it's not going to be us anymore. It's not going to be us anymore. That is what it is about. That's where we need to get, where we need to understand. But only the Holy Spirit can help us understand this thing. Unless the Holy Spirit teaches us that, we're going to see like what are they talking about? What's the, oh, what are they talking about? What is this? We, we're going to learn and uh, pray this song. That's calling the Holy Spirit to come. We're going to learn and 
pray. Yeah. Yeah. Esprit du Seigneur, Saint Vient. Yeah. Yeah. Esprit du Seigneur, Saint Yeah, short song. That's our prayer. Yeah, can we try to sing? Yeah, Esprit du Seigneur, Saint-Vient. Yeah, yeah. Esprit du Seigneur, Saint, viens. Let's stand up, please, and we're going to pray the song. Viens, let's sing it together. Viens, Esprit du Seigneur, Saint, viens. Viens. Yeah. Esprit du Seigneur, c'est bien. Viens, Saint-Esprit, viens. Viens, oh. Esprit du Seigneur, c'est viens. Viens, oh, viens, Esprit du Seigneur, c'est bien. Let's pray, let's pray. All upon the Holy Spirit to come, the Holy Spirit to direct us, the Holy Spirit to fill us up, the Holy Spirit to live the life of God in us. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us up, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, oh, do the thing, the will of God. Fulfill the work of God in us and through us. Come. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Spirit of the living God, come, oh, come, hallelujah. We want to do your will, God. We want to work for you, but we know how. We can't by ourselves. Lord, we need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come, fill us up, hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Come, hallelujah. Come, hallelujah. Hallelujah, and I fulfill to the will of God. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Precious Holy Spirit, we need you. Hallelujah. We need you, Holy Spirit, we need you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we need you. Oh, bien, bien, esprit du Seigneur, c'est bien, bien, oh, bien, esprit du Seigneur, Saint, viens, viens, Saint-Esprit, viens, Saint-Esprit, viens, Alléluia, Esprit du Seigneur, Saint, viens, oh, viens, oh, viens. 
Espíritu Santo, que yo sea tu no te demando, Espíritu Santo, We ask Papa Joseph for a more time to pray so that uh, we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. That we're not going to live a life according to the flesh. But we're going to live a life according to the Holy Spirit. According to God. Because must, Jesus said, unless you're born of water and of spirit, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, you can come to church. You can sing. You can do everything. But unless you be led by the Holy Spirit, you are not a child of God. Jesus. Dans ton esprit, nous ne sommes rien. Absolument rien, Seigneur. Il a dit à Nicodème, quand il est venu de nuit, et à mon avis, Seigneur, il est rentré baptisé du Saint-Esprit. Parce qu'on a vu nulle part. Il a demandé encore une prière de Dieu. Il a cru. Je voudrais, Seigneur, que tous nos bien-aimés qui sont en train de t'écouter maintenant soient baptisés et remplis du Saint. Quand Nicodème est rentré, il est rentré dans le silence et il a fait tout ce qu'il fallait faire. Il a manifesté sa foi en Jésus-Christ quand il est Dieu. Seigneur, je voudrais, Seigneur, que nous tous qui t'avons écouté, nous soyons remplis du Seigneur. Amen. Baptisés du Seigneur. Amen. Renouvelés dans la vie du Seigneur. Amen. Pour vivre. Alléluia. Seigneur, merci pour ton amour. Merci pour ta parole. Merci pour tes bénédictions multiples ce baptême, ce renouvellement du Saint-Esprit. Et toute gloire te revienne, Papa, dans les beaux noms et magnifiques de Jésus-Christ. Merci. Tout pour ta gloire, nous avons prié au nom de Jésus-Christ qui vient règne pour l'éternité. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Alléluia. Amen. We can be seated for a while. Uh, now is the time that uh, we come and offer up our, our money unto God. We can do it uh, different ways. We can use cell, you know, you use the telephone number or the email address. You can send your bank card information to the Cones Adole. You can also uh, uh, mail your, 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 your tie, your offering, and uh, all the way that is possible. And you can do it during the week. Maybe today you don't have money. But during the week, you got something you can do. And uh, may God bless everyone. But before we collect, we want to pray for all those who made the contribution, all those who uh, paid the tithe on sent the offering uh, last week. We are going to pray for them. Ask God to remember them. Ask God to visit them. 
As God, you know, if this ministry can have a place, we pay the bills almost $3,000 every month. Is that right? Elder, almost $3,000, more than $3,000 every month. It is through your tithe, your offering, your gift. So let's stand up. So we're going to pray for all those who participate at the collection of last week with tithe and offering. That our God visit, O oh Lord. We come to you today as a congregation, as a family, and we want to uh, commend to you all the brothers and the sisters last week who participate, O oh God, who sent the offering, who gave the offering, who paid the tithe, so this ministry for the church can be able to pay all the bills and be able to stay in this place, oh God. You see, uh, particularly last week, we had nothing in the, 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 the account, nothing. But by your grace, Lord, you touch your, your children, you touch them, your daughter and your son, to give something so that we can have the possibility to pay our bills, oh Lord, and to be here today. Lord, you know them and you know that they have their needs, oh God. Some are even struggling, oh God. But uh, by faith and uh, of faithfulness, they gave, oh Lord, according to what you have gave them. So Lord, we pray that you visit every single one of them where they are. Visit them, oh God, in their business. Visit them, O oh God, in the job. Visit them, O oh God, in anything they do to have, to earn some money for your glory and for, for their own needs, O oh Lord. God, we pray that you make them prosper. Your word declare, O oh God, that you shall come again and you shall see the difference between those who serve me and those who do not serve. You were talking about those who were giving and those who were not giving. So that's why, Lord, today we pray, God, that uh, you visit your people. And according to your promise, we rebuke the devourer for them, and we ask, oh God, that you restore all the year that uh, the grasshoppers have eaten up. You are able to do it, oh God. Bless the children and the students. With the, the little job that they do, oh God, but they remember to come with the offering, to come with the tithe. Remember, O oh God, every single one. Open the Lord God of heaven, O oh God. Surprise your children. Surprise your children, O oh God. Surprise your children, O oh God. Some have uh, some other needs, God. Maybe not financial needs, but you're the God who's able. You're the one who has to bless that lady because of her. You gave her a child because of uh, a, 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 a heart, a, a generous heart. God, your prophet. So, Lord, we pray for those who are needs. 
that no one can do but you. No one can meet the need but you. They come with their money and give into your work. Lord, we pray that you remember them in their special needs. Visit them, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God. Manifest yourself unto them and glorify your name into their lives, O oh Lord. Receive the glory and receive the praise. Lord, we pray that uh, by faith, everyone who had given last week will not lack of bread, will not lack of oil in this house, Lord. We pray that the pantries be filled, hallelujah. We pray, oh God, that there shall be abundance in the houses. For the glory of your name. We pray for good health. Sickness will not steal the money. But you're going to keep them in good health. Protect them so that the money can serve, O oh Lord, for good deeds. Hallelujah. For the glory of your name, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, we pray. And the people of God say, now we're going to receive our offering of today. And remember, if you're ready, today is social service also, contribution. If you're not ready, do it next Sunday. Yeah, we, last month also, remember, for last month, and uh, let's update uh, the actual. God bless us. for the offering. Holy Father, for allowing us allowing us um, this also thank you for the word as your people have brought their offering um, before you today. Oh, you pray that you bless them. Lord, I know that some people may not have enough, but they brought what they were able to bring to you. Lord, and you know the hearts of each and every one that has 
um, offer to you. I pray that you bless the offering, O oh Lord, and I pray that those that are struggling in finding work and that are struggling in their finances, I pray that um, I submit it into and I pray that you work it for them. Any birthday? Oh, okay, let's stand up. <clears throat> Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Jesus be the same. semaine, on apprend beaucoup de choses dans ces réunions. Entrez sur Zoom, si vous n'avez pas le Zoom ID, allez sur le WhatsApp de l'église, vous allez trouver le Zoom, on, a, on met toujours le ID, connectez-vous. Si vous ne voulez pas entrer sur Zoom, suivez sur Facebook directement. Et participons, écoutons. Et si vous avez manqué, vous étiez au travail, allez sur Facebook, revenez sur l'enseignement, sur le culte qui a été fait pendant la semaine. Nous n'avons pas beaucoup de temps, nous n'avons pas la possibilité de nous retrouver souvent, mais dans, pendant la semaine, nous avons cette parole-là qui, qui nous fortifie. Nous sommes dans une période grave où on n'a pas la possibilité de partager la parole librement comme il faut. Alors, profitons de ces temps pour que nous puissions nourrir nos esprits. Et n'écoutons pas seulement, mais quand nous écoutons, méditons et disons, Seigneur, Esprit de Dieu, accomplis cela en moi. Fais cela en moi. Réalise cela en moi. Amen. Partageons la grâce. Que l'amour de Dieu le Père, la grâce du Seigneur Jésus-Christ et la communion du Saint-Esprit soient avec nous. Car nous savons qu'en toutes choses, nous sommes plus que vainqueurs. Au nom de Jésus, qui nous a bénis de toutes sortes de bénédictions spirituelles dans les lieux célestes. Amen. Allez en paix et vivez une semaine bénie au nom de Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur et Sauveur. God bless you. God bless you. Exandé, il faut venir à temps.